Jumbo, fellow adventurers, Mike Dooley, happy fry yay. Time for a fry yay tune up. And I'm diving back into a beginner's guide to the universe. Available as a paperback this Tuesday. It's been out as a hardback for a year and a half. It's now in Polish and in German and uh, like a half a dozen other uh, languages that I don't <clears throat> recall right now. But I'm diving into my favorite chapter here, What Old Souls Know. Okay, and uh, Old Souls, a reference to how much experience one has in time and space. It's not chronological. Um, and while we are all simultaneously all born if you will, prior to time and space beginning, the term old soul is still a really good handle on explaining those who have probably progressed, if you will, through the lessons of time and space. Patience, appreciation, love, allowance, and then all good things are added unto them. So as I uh, said, I'm going to do some readings. Uh, once I start, I can hardly stop. I'll interject a few additional insights, um, picking up from the beginning of the chapter this time, instead of yesterday's end of the chapter. In all battles between the heart and the mind, go with your heart. For truly, it's a lot easier for your mind to catch up with your heart than for your heart to catch up with your mind. This is the real thinking center for all of us. We overuse and over rely on this. We get real logical. We try to micromanage everything. Whereas if every single day you can tune in here better, the brain will catch up. Okay, but don't make the heart try to think like the brain. Follow your heart. Next one. Step one for changing the entire world is falling in love with it as it already is. Same for changing yourself. You're so lovable. Come on, that's easy. And so is the world. Sometimes a lack of clarity is actually the clarity you were in need of. Sometimes we trick ourselves and sometimes we get, uh, we claim to be confused. We wanted that, but very clearly it's this. And we're like, I'm so confused. It's like, you know, you're not confused. You're disappointed. Allow. Move forward. Keep going. Sometimes the lack of clarity is actually the clarity you were in need of. Sometimes the answer you want isn't even any of the above. It's wait a little bit longer. The older the soul, the softer the glance, the quicker the smile, and the sooner to say I love you. They also tend to hold hands with those they walk beside. When pondering the vastness of the cosmos, I mean, a hundred billion stars in 100 billion galaxies times 10. Stars, not even planets. When pondering the vastness of the cosmos, keep in mind that it goes a lot farther inward than outward. You can usually tell an old soul by how indifferent they are to setbacks and by how friendly they are to trees. To trees! Our sentient brothers and sisters, come on. Young souls use pain to learn how things are. Mature souls use pain to learn how else things might be. And old souls use pain to learn how else they might be. Random awkwardness, unexpected shyness, feared inadequacy, and occasional blushing are just a few signs that a giant is settling in to their greatness. You know what I'm talking about, okay? Awkward, unexpected shyness, inadequacy. You got this sewn up. Always listen to your doubts. Not just because they might teach you of your fears, but because sometimes they might teach you 
of your wisdom. We use so many excuses to beat ourselves up and to be disappointed in ourselves. Oh, I'm afraid of this and I'm afraid. You're right to be afraid of half of the things you're afraid of. Go there and discover how and why. Excuse me. All right. Little hay fever or I don't know what allergies. Excuse me. Those who say, I don't know what to do usually do know what to do. That applies to me right now in picking a logo for our Adventurers Club. <laughs> so many good choices. Disappointment without anger is the mark of an old soul. Not being disappointed is the mark of a really old soul. And trusting life so thoroughly that every step on its path is valued more than where it was supposed to take you is the mark of eternal youth. Of all the things that really and truly matter, working efficiently and getting more done is not among them. Boy, I need that one every day. <laughs> you only have to ride the wave of life, not create it. Stop trying to do the heavy lifting. Stop trying to figure everything out with your mind. Let there be room for magic and miracles. Expect a miracle. You don't have to invent life. You don't have to figure it all out. It's been figured out. You just have to surf. You just have to ride. You just have to allow and receive. Nine out of ten old souls agree that one of the very best things about spiritual maturity is appreciating that age is so very meaningless. The tenth soul, out climbing trees and couldn't be reached. Okay, two more. The best way to create more free time is to take it. To move a mountain, befriend it, him or her. Befriend it, him or her. And the last one, everything that's ever happened to you up until hearing these very words was just practice for the really good stuff that's to follow. Too often I hear from a reader that, Mike, you know, I used to so have it. I used to be on the ball. I used to have optimism and believe in myself and I was just killing it and I, I don't know what happened. It just kind of fell apart. I'm so much further behind than I used to be in my youth or 10 years ago or two years ago or whatever. It's like you haven't lost anything. There's no such thing as sliding backwards. That's utterly impossible. Although our perceptions can change that feeling. You wouldn't want life to, to just be a total cakewalk. You didn't choose total cakewalk. You wanted the full Monty, lions, tigers, and bears, rainbows, unicorns, and pixie dust. You wanted it all. And as you master through optimism in your earlier so-called glory days, you started checking off all the boxes and then you started to become more aware as your naivety dissipated of the full playing board. And now you're like, oh my gosh, oh my God, I'm a little more scared now. Well, it's because you were so naive and ignorant before you couldn't see all the other players on the table but now that you can see them new lessons are here upon you and now you can be like oh those lions and tigers and bears are really angels unicorns and pixie dust and once you learn that you go higher and then you're like oh i didn't know that was there but you get the knack of it and you're able to dispel the illusions and rock on brother and sister all right, I hope you're enjoying A Beginner's Guide to the Universe. The paperback is now available at bookstores everywhere all over planet Earth. Uh, and it re officially releases Tuesday as a paperback. So you can order it now. Amazon Prime will deliver it or however you order it. There's lots of uh, uh, bonuses, book immersions, and an old soul workshop conducted live for those of you able to support this book launch. Thank you so much. Continue to post your questions below. I'll mix them in as I've been doing to the readings and the lessons and the interpretations. Have an awesome, happy 
uh, Friday and Friday and weekend. Laura, Barbara, Wendy, Susan, Kathy on Facebook. Uh, Animal Reiki Lady, yay. Ignite Your Soul, Dana, Carol, Aware Life. Okay, all of you. Gene, have an amazing weekend. Know that you're unstoppable, that you are utterly adored, that you came here to rock and roll. Blow the lid off of this popsicle stand. There's nothing you can't do, be, or have when you're grounded in truth. And that's the point of the 500 passages in this book intermingled with love letters. A beginner's guide to the universe. Happy weekend. See you Monday for a few more deep dives into this book next week. Hasta la vista, baby.